Hello guys, you've just started your journey of knowledge. If you're joining me on this journey of knowledge for the first time, welcome or welcome back. I'm Ashul the Brilliant, your host, and today I'm excited because we're going to be doing something, we're going to be talking about something complex. This is where the fun begins. So sometimes we'll have equations that won't be quadratic, but we can make them quadratic and then solve them. We'll cover different scenarios, so let's get moving. So today we're going to be talking about reducible quadratic equations, and I'm just going to write it down for you. Reducible quadratic equations. So um, what are reducible quadratic equations? Well, we've seen equations uh let's just click on this and uh go to the brush and yeah so we've seen quadratic equations such as 2x squared actually like in general we've seen equations like 2x squared plus uh 3x plus 5 equals 0 and we know that this is a quadratic equation because there's the square of the variable right over here and uh, we know that, like, for example, if we have something like 3x plus 9 equals 0, this is a linear equation. Um, I'm just going to write QE for short for quadratic equations, and uh, this will be linear equations. And uh, basically, LE for short. And uh, what we're going to talk about today is when, like, when there are scenarios, cases in which there, the power of the variable is more than 2. So, like, for example, we have, like, 2x raised to the fourth power minus 5x square. Uh, yeah, plus, I mean, like, you can actually take the cube here, too, actually. We should take the cube. Uh, plus 3x square minus 7x plus 9 equals 0. So today we're going to be looking at these type of equations. And these these equations aren't really quadratic because uh, they're, they're, the square of the variable is there, but there's something, there's some exponential power that's bigger than that, that's higher than that. And because of that reason, these are not quadratic equations. So to make them quadratic, um, we're going to use some tricks, and I'm going to show you in this video how you can get these, uh, how you can get quadratic equations, and then obviously we have to solve those quadratic equations to get the results. And I'm just going to say that over here, as you can see, the, like the highest power of uh, this variable right here is 4. And that means that like this variable's value, there are going to be four values of this variable. And, like, if it was, for example, the highest was 3, like, for example, I mean, like, you actually know from my quadratic equations video that, like, quadratic equations have two answers because the highest power of the variable is 2. So, like that, there, over here it's going to be 4, if it was only cube uh, was the highest, then that, mean, that, that would mean there would be three values of uh, x. So, uh, we have scenarios. In these, we have scenarios, and first I'm going to talk about case one. Uh, so let me just write down case one. So case one is if you have something in the form of ax raised to the fourth power plus bx squared plus c equals zero. If you have something in this form, uh, what do you do? Well, it's really simple. Over here, as you can see, there's x squared. There's x squared right here. And over here, there's x raised to the fourth power. And what you can tell is, you can probably tell over here that, you know, like if basically uh, we square x squared, then we can get x raised to the fourth power. So what, what you can do, what you're going to do is you are going to let x squared equal another variable, for example, y. So x squared equals y. Now, if x squared equals y and you need x raised to the fourth power's value, uh, you obviously, what are you going to do? You're going to square this, right? You're going to square this so that you get x raised to the fourth power. And when you square it on one side, you have to do it on the other side to make the uh, equality hold. So x squared, when it's squared, equals y squared. So x raised to the fourth power 
This means the x raised to the fourth power equals y squared. Now, what are we going to do? We are going to uh, put in the value, basically, of uh, x, x raised to the fourth power and x squared. So over here, we had a x raised to, uh, a x raised to the fourth power. So we're, we're going to write a y squared uh, plus b is x squared. So x squared equals y. So b y plus c equals zero. So now, as you can see, we uh, have it in a standard quadratic equation, uh, a standard quadratic equation or a quadratic equation in standard form. And you know what we can do from from here, we can solve it with any of three uh, methods. It's you know your choice. You want to put a pop in the values using the uh, quadratic formula. You want to solve it with the completing square method factorization, whatever you want. So, yeah uh now uh i want to give you an example of this so we're going to take the example uh let's say that we have x raised to the fourth power minus 13 x squared plus 36 equals zero so this is like a simple real life example of what i just uh the case that i just told you this is the same thing right so like what is uh uh what can we do over here actually yeah what is reducible over here well x square looks pretty reducible over here because like well not like x square x square i mean like x raised to the fourth power but i mean like you can reduce it to x square or you can square x square to get x raised to the fourth power so over here these two you can write again i'm just gonna let x square equal y exactly what we did in the uh in a generalized version you could say so x squared equals y and x square when you square you get x raised to the fourth power and you square y as well obviously and uh, you get x raised to the fourth power equals y square and what you do now is pop in the values i mean put it in actually the values of uh, x x square and x raised to the fourth power so x raised to the fourth power will be y square minus 13 y as x squares value is y plus 36 equals zero now uh i'm going to use the factorization method and for the factorization method what you need to do is you need to multiply the coefficient of the what's called x squared which is a with the constant which is c so over here 36 is the constant and uh, 1 is the coefficient of x squared or you could say y squared in this case because we're dealing with y right now. So uh, we're going to multiply 1 and 36 and uh, we'll get ac equals 36 plus 36 by the way. And since it's a plus 36, the factors that we like basically 1 and 36 are basically factors of 36 because we multiplied them to get 36 and both of them are positive. So that means now like we need to factorize 36 so we need like all its factors and whatever pair of those factors sums up to minus 13 y we're going to choose that factor but the pro uh we're going to choose that pair of factors but the problem is that like they're both going to have the same sign Th this sign over here guys this uh this sign right here this sign is the decider this is important this this sign tells us what sign the factors will have so like if it's a minus that means like both of the factors they're obviously going to be minus and like both of them are by the way so uh let me just uh factorize 36 so factors of 36 can be 1 and 36 they can be 2 and 18 they can be 3 and 12 they can be four and nine, and they can be six and six. After this, the process just repeats. It's like nine and four, uh, what's called 12 and three, and uh, 18 and 20, like uh, 18 and two. And uh, yeah, that's uh, pretty much it. So now both the factors have the same sign, and it's a negative sign, as we know. So when we add minus 1 and minus 36, it's going to be minus 37. So this pair of factors is not it. Then we have like minus 2 and minus 18. So that will be minus 20. That's also not it. Then we have 
minus 3 and minus 12. So that will be minus 15. Minus 15 is not it either. Then we have minus 4 and minus 9. Um, if you're thinking what I'm thinking, I'm thinking that this is the one. So, yeah, it is the one. It's uh, We get minus 13 with uh, minus 4 and uh, minus 9. So that means that this one is trash, but like let's just check it out anyway. Minus 6 and minus 6, minus 12. So, yeah, just I just wanted to let you know, just in case anybody thinks that. I don't know <laughs> that that's the right one, but yeah. So uh, we have minus four and minus nine. That means we're gonna split this this uh, this minus thirteen y into minus four and minus nine. So when I split it up, I'll have y square minus four y minus nine y plus thirty six equals zero. Now, I'm going to take y common from the first pair. We're going to have y minus 4. And I'm going to take minus 9 common from the second pair. And we're going to have y minus 4. Now, equals 0. Now, my, y minus 4 is common. So I'm going to write it common. And we're going to have y minus 4 into y minus 9. And these two are the factors and uh of that equation that we just you know factorize basically <laughs> and uh there's their product over here as you can see equals zero so that means one of these uh factors has to be zero so that the other is also zero and uh yeah so we don't know which one of these factors is zero so we're gonna say we're gonna just let either one of them be either we're gonna say either y minus four equals zero or y minus 9 equals 0. In the first case, y will move, uh, minus 4 will move to the other side and we'll get y equals 4. In the second case, we'll move minus 9 to the other side and its sign will also change. Uh, I forgot the or. You just write the or. y will equal plus 9. This was, yeah. So y's values are 4 and 9. So that's our solution set. But we're not done yet, guys. So what I said uh, is that I let I let x square equal y, and we actually wanted the value of like x, right? And I said that x will have four values, and it's gonna have four values. But we have the values of y, which are four and nine. So that means that like since x square equals y, then x square should also equal four and nine. So we're gonna say since. Um, yeah, since x squared equals y, and that means that then if y equals 4, then x squared should also equal 4. And uh, what we can do from here is, you know, we can take, we can simplify this by uh, taking the square root on both sides and on the left uh right side there will be plus minus because we don't really know whose square is uh four like it could be of the square of uh two like positive two or it could be the square of negative two so yeah there's that so we'll get plus minus is what we'll get because uh Two is the square root of four. <clears throat> and then we're also, similarly, we're just going to say since for the other value of y, we're going to say x squared equals y, then x squared should equal its other value, and that value is nine. So x squared should equal nine. And uh, if this is the case, then we can simplify this again, just like this. We can uh, take the square root and on the right hand side it will be plus minus and when we do this we'll get plus minus three as nine is a square of three so yeah now we have two values of x from here two values from here from both the values of y we have two values each of x so that means x has four values just like it was a quadratic equation so it was supposed to have four values and the values of x will be plus minus 2 and plus minus 3 and uh, this is case 1. 
that's it for this video guys i hope it was helpful if you have any question comment or confusion please shoot me a message down below and uh we'll spend more time on it and uh if you think that it could help somebody else it could do them some good then uh please share with them and if you haven't already then please uh i recommend you ring that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of my videos and uh yeah until next time peace out guys